Coach, I appreciate it, man. I'm, I'm fired up to be here. Um, you know, I've, I've tuned in to probably 50 Zoom conferences since, um, since COVID-19 hit. And, you know, it's, it, it, it could have been a, a super dark time for us as coaches, um, guys that, that like to be out, be with our kids and be around our guys, coaching, um, you know, feeling, doing all that good stuff. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm super encouraged by um, the, the positivity, um, the adaptability of, you know, our coaching community across the country. It's been super encouraging to see um, and, and uplifting and motivating for me. You know, it inspires me as, as, a, as a young coach to see, to see all you guys um, I'm continuing to band together and, and I'm just proud to proud to join in and, and proud to be a part today. Um, you know, a little bit about me, uh, like coach said, um, starting, starting back, I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. I, I was born and raised here. Um, you know, I, I came out of Hewitt Trustville and, and went to Vanderbilt. I, I played fullback um, there, got to block for, for a bunch of special dudes, dudes that, um, you know, are playing in the league still now and got to learn, learn and meet and connect with, with a lot of new people, a lot of great people that, um, you know, I continue to stay in touch with today. And that, that led me on, you know, I went to Vandy um, and started my freshman season as a fullback. And I actually ended up with, with a career and a neck injury that, that you know, let, led me into coaching. Um, once, once I felt that, you know, the pain and anguish of, you know, I don't, I don't have the game anymore. What am I going to do? You know, I, I realized immediately, you know, this, this is my calling. Um, this is where I'm led to be. Um, and then this is what I want to do. So, so from there, you know, I, I, um, I started as a student assistant at Vandy. I coached our fullbacks for a year. Um, and, and kept moving on and in, ended up graduating in three years, um, help, helping the spring at, at Hewitt Trustville back, back, back at home um, where I'm originally from. And um, now, now I've been at EC for, for a little over a year, um, you know, got hired as a safeties coach and, and ended up moving over to running backs. And, and this, this past off season, I took over our strength program. So that's something, um, you know, that, that I correlate a lot with, with running back play. And, and I try to bring it, bring it into play as much as we can. Um, you know, another thing that, that I'm on here for is, you know, to I'm super thankful um, for, for the people, um, all the ones that have been on here and, and the ones that, that have come, you know, through my life at certain times that have poured into me and influenced me and given me, um, you know, the tools that, that, that give me the ability to, to you know, present to you and, and, and build information and build knowledge um, and, and build, build a clean knowledge base about around, um, you know, how to coach the running back. And, and what I'm going to talk about today, you know, is, is coaching the running back from the ground up. Um, you know, I, 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 I titled it that because, you know, I believe in the, the simple, the, the little details, um, you know, of running back play that, that really make the back, that really make the back, the back go and, and, and you know, um, make back successful. So that's, that's just a little graphic. That's the guys we brought in this year. These are our two returners right here. Um, this, is, this is the guy right here. He's, he's, he's one of our guys. He started for us last year. Um, you know, led, led the team in rushing, had, had a great year, was, was, was a JUCO All-American. Um, you know, we signed, we signed five this year. So we're, we're you, see, you see we take pride in running the ball. Um, we're, we're fired up about, about these five guys we brought in. And, and I think, you know, with this running back room is, is going to be great. Um, we're going we're gonna to develop some great habits and, and do some great things with these guys. Um, this is my contact info. I'll, sh I'll flash it again at the end um, for you guys that want it. You know, I, I, I did not include a lot of video today. Because, you know, in, in, in my experience with, with Zoom, you know, it's been super choppy. Um, you know, I, I gave you guys a visual rather than video, um, you know, uh, um, just a little draw up a markup for you guys um, with a couple drills. But I did not show video. So this is my contact. If you do, um, if you want to see video, you know, also we're, we're always evaluating talent. Um, with, with JUCO now in Mississippi, we get, we get 10 out-of-state players. So, um, you know, it's super tough. We, we do love. Um, to, to evaluate every single player, though, and give every, every single player a chance, you know, to be one of those 10. So, so um, whatever it is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always open to, to reaching out and, and connecting with, with new guys and new coaches. And um, whatever that be about, you know, I'm, I'm open. My why, um, you know, my, my why is, 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 is to impact players. You see my guys right here, you know, um, I, I tell my guys every time, you know, we have an intro meeting um, when, when they get in and, you know, I'm spilling some of this stuff to them, but, um, you know, the main thing I'm emphasizing to them is, you know, at, right now at this age, man, I'm not married. I don't have kids. You know, I'm not, I don't have any dependents. You guys are my family. And, um, you know, I really take pride in, in making them feel that, you know, it's, it's real easy to talk about it and, you know, um, and say this and that, but, but when you really get down to it, um, you know, when, when was the last time, you know, you checked up on your guys and, and asked how they were doing. And it's not just a conversation of, you know, are you working out? You know, how's, how's your online class going or whatnot? You know, it's, it's calling them up and saying, you know, how you doing, man? Is, is everything okay? You know, is there anything I can do? Um, 
you know, whatever that be in your own personality, I, I encourage you to, know, you know, um, you use the word love with your players. Um, you know, I think love is, is the strongest force in the universe. Um, you know, and, and this is my why, my guys, the people that are around me and, and, and making them better and, and, seeing them, and seeing them go on and, and do great things. So just, um, you know, for, for my guys, especially in, in JUCO, I like to, um, you know, some good advice I got when I, when I first started coaching was, you know, um, almost coach, coach your guys like you're coaching a kindergarten. Be very basic, be very simple, um, and, and use basic progression. So um, what, what I tell our guys a running back is, is, is an elite athlete that possesses a multitude of skills such as speed, strength, and power, translating to physically dominant performances in every game. So, um, you know, as a strength coach, I like, to, I like to include the three big ones, speed, strength, and power. Um, so, so I like to emphasize, all right, we take these things and we translate them to the field. You know, we, we take it from the weight room to the field. And um, that translation is one of the biggest things I want to see happen. Um, you know, that, that's, that's what I love about the weight room is, is you can see, you know, the transition of um, these guys working on the little details of, of each lift and, and that, that translating into, you know, how, how they bend and how their base looks and, you know, how they come through their hips and all that stuff, um, it, it relates now. And for me, um, telling these guys this, I, I think it overemphasizes, um, you know, the, these three characteristics of the running back. I think it's huge, um, you know, to understand that, but also to translate it in, into the game. And, you know, obviously we all, we all know what a running back is, but, um, but like I said, I want to I wanna make my guys understand, make them take pride in, uh, in what they're doing and what we're teaching. So this is, this is a little uh, acronym I came up with. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm big on acronyms. I think, you know, it, it is good for guys to, to, to have a picture, um, you know, of, of what a word means or, or take, take something from that word. And, you know, a word I use a lot is elite. Um, you know, I, I was introduced to that word and I've, I've, it stuck with me um, for, for a while now and I've always used it. You know, I, I see elite in, in terms of greatness plus one. Um, you know, we take that greatness aspect and we add to it. So um, when we talk about elite and, and, you know, elite people, elite athletes, elite coaches, you know, elite academics, whatever it be, um, you know, they understand that every little inch takes effort. So when we talk in terms of elite, you know, I'm telling my guys, every little inch takes effort. So um, whether that be walking to class, you know, um, what you eat, what you put in your body, you know, what you listen to, what, what, what you talk about, all those little things, you know, they take effort. We have to make sure that, that they align with our goals. So, um, you know, what, whether that applies, you know, on the field, in the class, like I said, anywhere, it, it can always apply. And, um, you know, for my guys, like I said, we want, we want to lay everything out and make sure, um, you know, everything is clearly defined for them. So uh, as we're teaching and as we're going through, um, you know, our daily routine, our daily grind, they're, they're picking up everything I'm saying. They understand exactly what I'm saying. So for me, you know, effort, it means focus, intent, and passion. Um, it, those, those three things drive, drive effort. You know, a lot of times um, you'll, you'll tell a guy, you know, give, give, me, give me effort. And they'll, they'll run down there on kickoff like, you know, a, a bull in a china shop. But if we can understand, you know, how to direct that effort and how to control that effort, um, you know, we'll, we'll be just fine. And so, so like I said, um, being elite, you know, it, we, we want to put effort in everything we do that, that's focus, intent, and passion. And, and in terms of, you know, the, the person, the player, um, you know, development that, that, that we're doing, this is something that our head coach, Ken Karcher, um, he, he, takes, he takes pride in is, is our four phases of development. You know, I tell our guys, um, you know, you're, you're more than a player. You're more than an athlete. So, um, you know, when you take off, when you take all those shoulder pads and you get in the shower and you walk over to class, now you're still the same person, right? You, you, st you may look a little different from, um, you know, from, from the visual, but you're still the same person. And, and, you know, how can we carry those habits to, to every aspect of life that, that, that we walk into? So, um, you know, we break them down into four phases. The first being physical. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a weight room guy. So, so we're, we're developing constantly in there. And that's something, um, you know, that I take pride in is, is, is our guys doing, you know, the little details and, and the biomechanics and, um, and all that good stuff the right way and, and doing it uh, fundamentally. You know, the physical development is one of the biggest we're going to see, and it's probably the most time we're going to spend um, with our guys inside of that physical uh, development range. But the, the, the other three, man, the biggest three, um, you know, when we talk about um, be, be, being an elite person, uh, we, we want to develop elite people. And, you know, um, th those three are, are intellectually, spiritually, and socially. And, you know, um, first thing, you know, I, I want to talk about the, the social development. And, you know, I think it's, it's critical right now um, with, with the time we're in, man, is um, – because as coaches, we, we're often, you know, the, the first line of defense and the last line of defense. So with, with our guys, man, if we can 
um, you know, develop them to, to understand, you know, how, how their emotions are going to work, you know, how they're going to react um, when they're put in certain situations and, and, you know, ultimately how to, how to handle that situation. Um, you know, just, just like what's going on now, man. Um, you know, I do recognize that there's a problem in our, in our country. Um, there, there's supreme injustice and, and we need change. Um, but, you know, the, the first way to fix a problem is recognizing that we have a problem. And, you know, these are conversations that, that we should be having with our guys. You know, the due date uh, for these conversations is way past time. Um, you know, being, being, a, being a white male, um, you know, and a majority of our players are our, our players that are, that are African-American or people of color. Um, so so we, we have to understand, you know, like I said, we're the first line of defense and the last line of defense. And, and the way we demonstrate, um, you know, these qualities and these responses is, is how, how our players are going to react. You know, that's what they're going to demonstrate is what they see. So, you know, I take pride in developing my players uh, outside of the field, you know, outside of the weight room. I, I take pride in, in spending time with them. Um, you know, I actually had the chance last season to, to be our academic advisor. Um, and I got to hit, hit a huge piece of this intellectual development. And, you know, that, that was also something that, that I put a lot of work into, put a lot of time into because, um, you know, our, our head coach even told me one time, um, I, I thought this was really cool. You know, he, it, it sounds super cliche, and he, but he told me, you know, even if, even if this kid can't make it, you know, if, if you're teaching this kid how to send a proper email with proper grammar and proper email etiquette, you know, you're winning. You're, you're, you're doing something for the kid. You're, you're giving him something to carry on with him. So, you know, I think as a coach, it's our responsibility um, to, go, to go beyond uh, what, what we're expected in, in teaching ball and, and teaching all these other things. My philosophy, you know, something something I'm telling my guys and, um, you, you know, what I'm kind of feeding to them every day is, you know, the higher your energy level, the more efficient your body. And the more efficient your body, the better you feel and the more you use your talent to produce outstanding results. And this, this you know, I always talk about juice. I'm always talking about bring some energy, bring some juice. And, you know, I think this this really lays sends it home for our guys in understanding that, um, you know, it's, it's not fake juice, all right, but – you know, you can trick your body into, into producing, you know, better results by, um, you know, being mentally locked in and mentally understanding, um, you know, the, what, 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 what it requires of you and, and, and how, how can I do more than, than what is required of me. So for us, this is something, um, you know, that hangs in our room that we're going to, that we're going to, you know, talk about often. You know, I, I'm, I'm a very, um, you know, I, I like to have a long-term vision, um, understanding, you know, where we're heading and, and how, how we make that happen every day. So, you know, these are things we talk about, you know, throughout, throughout every phase of, um, of our development and, and our, our daily process. You know, one, one thing I really want to talk about here is our attitude and mentality standards. So, you know, I asked three things of them in terms of, um, in terms of their attitude and mentality is, you know, love your teammates. Just, just like we talked about, man, love, love is, is the most powerful un, uh, force on the universe. Um, you know, you can't drive out hate with hate. So, um, you know, through conflict on our team, through – through competition, we're, we're going to love our teammates and we're going to show, um, you know, the ultimate respect to our brother um, that, you know, we have to we have to consider and, and create an environment of, you know, this is family. You know, we spend a lot of time together. We go through um, blood, sweat, tears. We, we hit the trenches together. So so um, the, the bond we create, it has to be family. Uh, and, and that's 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 part on part on us as coaches, you know, to to, to force them to be in, um, you know, to be in competition and, and to really grind their gears together, um, you know, because. Um, the diamonds are made by pressure. You know, we, we were trying to create diamonds and, and we, we have to apply pressure to those guys. Uh, the next is, you know, the group, or the team, the unit, it's our first priority. So um, within our room, we have to make sure that, that we're putting each other first. We're making sure that, you know, even though this might not look great on me, you know, it's for the best of the team. You know, I, I, I may not start this game. You know, we may be using two backs this game. What, whatever it be, you know, we have to understand that, you know, we're as coaches and players, we're, we're promoting – you know, unity and, and what's best for the team. We're, we're trying to win football games. So uh, we, have, we have to get our guys to understand, you know, that, that aspect of, you know, we have to put the team first and we're going to make decisions based on that um, and that only. So, uh, and the next, guys, is, is be the thermostat, not the thermometer. You know, I, I like to talk to my guys about the value you bring to a room, you know, the value you bring to the classroom, the value, the value you bring to the meeting room, the value you bring to practice. Uh, wh whatever it be, you know, I ask them, you know, to feed their environment and, and, and not, not be soaked in. Uh, to that environment, ask them, you know, to walk into a room and, and, and bring value to it. You know, we'll talk a little, a little bit about that more um, as we get into some of our meeting stuff. But, you know, I ask them to bring value into every room they walk into. So in, in terms of meeting with our guys, man, you know, I, 
obviously, as, as every team in the country feels like, man, we're, we're super limited in our meeting time. You know, I, if it was up to me, I, I'd choose hours and hours more, but um, that, that's not the way it always goes. You know, we're, we're, we're limited and we have to be super efficient, uh, you know, one, in our communication, two, you know, in, in, our, in, in the way we prepare. So, um, you know, what I'm telling them is, is when we show up to a meeting, you know, um, we're, we're early, we're prepared, we're professional, and, and we have great focus. You know, to be, to be the best running back core in, in the NJCAA, you know, we have to have the best mental focus in the NJCAA. It, it, we got to take it from the class to the grass. So, um, you know, it starts right here in meetings. The first thing I ask them, you know, is, is to be prepared and professional. Uh, that, that, that doesn't always mean, you know, like it says on number two, having your playbook, having your pencil, your pen. Um, that doesn't always mean that it means being mentally prepared and understanding, you know, what, what, what are we going to do today? You know, I, I feel like it's my responsibility to um, the, the day before I must lead into what, what we're going to be covering the next day or what we're going to be going over, you know, what I'm going to be teaching them. So they have time to go home and, and make sure they understand a piece of that before we walk in and install whatever there's a full play, you know, whether we go over a full drill, whatever it is, um, they, they have time to go over and understand it. So making sure they're prepared and professional, you know, professional being, um, the, the way they communicate, the way they respond. Um, you know, I, I ask them to respond, one, with confidence, you know, uh, an uplifted voice and, and using our terminology because, you know, that, that's important. As, as, as I've grown in, as a coach, you know, I, every year more and more I understand the importance of our terminology, of our buzzwords, and you'll see me using some here that, that I like to use a lot that, that are my kind of twist on things um, and, and ways I found, found to be effective uh, with our guys. And the last is, like I said, leave the room better than you left. It. Bring value to the room. Um, a lot of guys want to talk about picking up a piece of trash and, and pushing your chair, and, and that is what we expect again. But um, you know the way you the way you approach a room is the value you bring to it. Uh, we all we want to be peer coaching. We want to be engaged with 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 our teammates and, and, and making sure you know they know what I know and I know what they know. Um, so so we're all, all building each other up and and learning together. The next is practice standards, and uh, so, something I try to I try to promote. Um, you know, inside our room is, is asking tough questions, you know, asking those guys, you know, how do we practice? Do we practice like we're trying to win a championship? You know, do we practice like the best group on the field? And do we have the habits of a champion? Those are the things, you know, I'm challenging my guys on daily, whether that's in the weight room, whether that's, you know, our running back group, whoever it is, um, you know, I'm challenging them to, to up their standard every single day. You know, something, something I heard a while back was, you know, every day, you should try to try to up the standard from the next day. If you can do that, you know you're gonna you're gonna have continued growth and and and, and continued success. Um, a couple of things I want to hit on uh, about practice. You know, uh, I take pride in us being the first group on the field every day. You know, I think uh, time put in directly applies to success. So um, with with that goes, you know, we we have to attack the field. Whether you know there's nobody else out there, it's just us, no managers, uh, no coaches. It's just us as running backs. We still take the field the same way we do every time because it sets the tempo. We're going to attack the field and we're going to set the tempo for, for the rest of practice we're about to have. Uh, and also carry that over from means. You know, it, it comes straight out from means. We attack the field and, and we have a great practice. The next, uh, we're, we're not going to lose interpositional drills. You know, that, that's the standard. Um, when, when we do crossover periods with whether it be the linebackers or, or DBs or whatever it is, you know, the, the standard is to win every time. That, that's what we're telling. We're going over there to win. Um, we're obviously going over to get better and improve, but um, you know, the, the, the biggest way, the most effective way to, to improve is competition. Uh, so we're going to go in there and compete. You know, we're going to be physical and violent. And, and you know, we're going we're gonna to grind those gears. Like we said, we're going to make each other better. But, but we're not going to lose. That, that's the mindset we have to have. Um, you know, throughout every drill, every, everything we do, that there has to be a, a, you know, a mindset of competition. I'm not losing um, th this other position group, whatever it be. You know, we're, we're going to take over this drill and we're going to win it. And, and the last one um, being even in a walkthrough, you know, um, we talk about means, we talk about practice, but we never mention walk through that kind of gray area. Um, you know, the, the practice expectation, the meeting expectation, it, it, it holds true in walk through. You know, I feel like it's, it's a, com a combination of um, meeting and, and, and practice. So uh, we, we hold the same standard in, in a walk through. You know, you're going to be locked in, you're going to be, be prepared, um, and you're going to be professional. So, so we, we hold these standards for practice and meetings. Uh, I, think it, I think it works great for us, um, you know, making sure we communicate the standard of, of what we do and how we do it and, and, you know, upholding it every day is the biggest thing. You know, it's, it's real easy to let, to let your standards slip, um, you know, especially with, with, with some of your better guys. Now you, you, you feel like you, you can loosen up on them because they've done this and that. Well, um, you know, the standard is, is supposed to be set high and those, those other guys are watching now, even if, um, you know, they're, they're not playing, 
whether they haven't they haven't played a snap, they're playing special teams, or whatever it is, um, you know, they're looking, they're watching to make sure me as a coach, you know, I uphold my standard. And so I want to demonstrate that for them and that, you know, we're we're all equal, we're all working the same, we're all trying to get to the same place and 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 the standard it stays the same for all of us. So I I I kind of use this this saying um as complete backs. So you know I I I term that by, by three things. It's running with the football, catching the football, and blocking for the football. Um, those three things are critical. Those are our responsibilities within our offense. Um, you know, this year with, with us, we're, we're going to really emphasize that, that, number, that number two, catching the football out of the backfield. We're, we, have, uh, we have a very versatile back, um, a very versatile few backs, matter of fact. And uh, we really want to emphasize, you know, getting, getting our running back involved in our passing game. Um, getting them involved in our passing concepts and, and you know, ultimately putting the ball in, in playmakers' hands. So the first, um, you know, for me, like I said, I want to be very detailed, um, lay, out, lay out everything for my guys so they can understand, you know, how I evaluate, what I expect, and, and you know, what, what, what I want them to be ultimately as, 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 a, as a ball runner, uh, as a running back. Um, you know, you know these, these are also things – um, you know, I, I try to recruit on. I try to I try to look for when I recruit. These these are five you know critical aspects of of running back play. And, and the first being you know when we're running the ball, we, I got to see your attitude. I, I need to see you know a clear um, a clear demeanor when you run. Um, you know, understanding that um, we're, we're going to score a touchdown or first down every play. I should see that in your demeanor. You guys should see it in the way you run. I see it in the way you move, um, the way you talk, act, etc. All right. The second is being decisive. You know, since 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 I was young here talking about running back play, you know, I've I've heard guys say, um, you know, it's better to be decisive than be right. You know, whether that means, um, you know, just because we say it's going to be an A gap run, it's an A gap run, or it's a puncher because it's a puncher, it's not always going to work out that way. But be decisive. You know, get 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 one yard now if you have to, rather than um, dancing around the heels of the offensive tackle and maybe losing a yard, maybe getting zero. Um, you know, it's it's our responsibility to get the ball at least back to the line of scrimmage, uh, no no matter what happens. So. Um, being decisive is a critical critical aspect of that. Uh, pad level and body lean, you know, it's it's also a critical aspect of running the football. Uh, we we want to give the defender less surface area to attack, less to grab onto, um, you know, and, and ultimately number four, we want to have the ball in the outside arm so we can continue to use that off that off arm and again give the defender less surface area um, to attack my football. You know, like we're we're going to talk about here in a minute um, in terms of ball security, we that, that's our baby. We got to protect it at all costs. And you know we got to keep it in in the in the arm away from the defender. Um, and like I said, it's also a great tool um, to to use your outside arm and your offhand moves. And then the fifth is finishing in a dominant position, um, putting in a second and third effort. And you know what what I tell my guys with this piece, you know, um, is when you're finishing a run, you know, if you're going to get tackled, finish belly down. That that's our dominant position is belly down. Uh, we always want to finish forward. You know, you you can gain. Um, you know, hundreds of yards in a season, depending on how many carries you get, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, based on just falling forward. You, you see guys like um, guys like Derrick Henry with the, with the Titans, you know, going back, watching him at Alabama and the way he fell forward, um, you know, for three, four yards as a, as a 6'3 back is, is impressive and, and it wins games. It, it produces, you know, um, efficient offense for us. So that's something we want to we wanna do in, in these are the five ways. Uh, we we kind of incorporate, you know, our culture and our, our – um, you know, our, our fundamentals into running the football. So inside of that is ball security, like we said. You know, I'm telling those guys, the, the ball's your baby, protect it at all costs. Um, you know, a couple of my buzzwords that I use is, is lock and load, something I've carried with me since, since day one of coaching is lock and load. Um, and wrist above elbow. So when we talk in terms of, of wrist above the elbow, you know, we, we want to emphasize that wrist being directly above the elbow. So you, you, you naturally, like, like you would hold a ball, your, your elbow is going to be a little out, right? Um, you know, as you see in the five points of pressure, we want to emphasize that rib cage contact. So um, I've heard a few guys reference it as as close the back door. Uh, we want to make sure that elbow is tightly attached to that rib cage, um, and we have that ball secured. You know, my, my five points of pressure. I've heard <laughs> probably probably a hundred hundred different ways um, to explain it, but the the way I see it, the way I believe, um, you know, the first the first point of pressure is the fingers. I, I consider the eagle claw. All right, these these two front fingers, we're we're putting them right around the point of the football. Um, attaching them securely, making sure we have, um, you know, every, every bit of grip we can get. The second is the wrist. We always want that wrist contact to make sure we have a full grip with our hand on the football. Um, the third is our forearm going down the arm. The, the fourth is our bicep, all right? It's going to sit on the other side of the football. And now for the fifth, for the fifth point of pressure, 
Uh, we're we're going to take that elbow and we're going to attach it tightly to our rib cage. All right. And, it, and it's not going to leave that rib cage. It's going to be attached to the rib cage the whole time. Um, and, and I do, I do add a six point of pressure, um, you know, in, in traffic when, when we're getting ready to make contact, I, I tell them to grab their watch, you know, grab, grab their watch. This is a six point of pressure. I'm going to pull that elbow in, pull that wrist in, make sure that ball is tight. And, and like, like we said, give, give the defender less surface area on that ball, um, you know, to make sure that, that we protect it and we, we protect our baby. Um, something, something I emphasize, uh, particularly in practice, is, is our ball rule. I call it a ball rule. Uh, we always want to make sure, you know, uh, we, we hand the ball off. We never let it touch the ground. That's, that's taking pride in, in our ball security and, and our baby. And, and you know, like, like it says here, the ball is the program. You know, ball security is job security. And we got to make sure that, that we protect that at all costs. Within that, um, this, this is something that, that we used when I was at Vandy. You know, I, I took it along with me. Um, Coach, Coach Andy Lowig and um, Coach Blakeney did a great job of, of emphasizing this and, and making sure we knew, um, you know, when we were vulnerable with the football, when we put that football in jeopardy. So um, this is something I'm carrying with me now. Um, you know, I'm, I'm carrying with me day to day inside my room. Um, and so, so what this means, uh, a flag is when I can see, you know, on film, this football sticking out the back. Um, obviously, his his elbow is not attached to his rib cage, so um, that that's considered one flag. All right, um, you know, as we go through the week, you know, there there will be guys that are struggling now. Um, that you know, especially week one and two in camp, there's going to be guys, um, you know, that, that that have maybe one or two points of pressure, and and that's an issue for us now. That's an issue that that you know that will directly affect playing time. You know, that that will direct directly affect trust, um, especially when you put that ball on the ground. So we emphasize, you know, a flag system and, and what. What, what you see here is, is J.D. running the football, and, and he, he's obviously, um, you know, displaying what, what I would call a flag. And so we go through the week, and let's say a guy gets three flags. Um, he gets one on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So Thursday, we come into meetings. All right, I hand him two balls, and he does a wall sit. I call them ball sits. Um, you know, I'm not a big proponent uh, of punishment work or anything, but when it comes to ball security, guys, this is, um, this is a non-negotiable for me. Um, this is something we got to be 100% with. We got to be a one at this, you know, all the time. Uh, so, so for me, this, like I said, it's a non-negotiable, um, and, and we will incorporate work, um, you know, to, to earn those flags back, which which are our ball sits. And, you know, if I have a guy that, that's really struggling, that just, you know, can't seem to get it, I'll tell him to take two. So we'll go through um, some of these drills. I'll show you, and I'll tell him to take two, which means take two balls. And you know, until I tell you otherwise, you're walking around with two balls. You know, you're doing every drill with two balls, uh, whether that be our ball security drills, whether it be uh, a change of direction drill. You know, I expect to see you with two balls with, with all five points of pressure on both balls. Uh, so that, this is something I love, man, that I think, um, you know, as, as serious as we take this, I think it can um, kind of be interesting, uh, kind of be kind of be fun for our guys to, to, you know, compete in this realm and make sure, you know, they're, they're protecting that football. Next, uh, I won't spend too much time on this, guys. Um, just, just more talking about, uh, talking about run game, but I do want to talk about, like I said, we're going to, we're going to get into so a lot more um, route running and pass catching with our, with our backs. And uh, I want to make sure they understand, you know, the, the, the basic details, the minute details of, of catching the football. And um, the, the first being their head and eyes, I want to see urgency with them. Um, you know, at the top of the route, I'm teaching something right now that, um, you know, that I just learned is called a, I tell them to stripe them. Stripe, we want to show our stripe in the opposite direction uh, and push out, push out towards our route. Um, the second being lay hands. All right, we want to pump our hands um, in our route until we get to the catch, and then we want to extend our hands, um, positioning our body between the ball and the defender uh, with, with great catch extension and make sure, um, you know, we one, we secure that ball, and two, we give the defender a 0% chance to, to affect that throw. Uh, the fourth being hand placement, uh, some, something I love that, that our receivers coach, Coach Foshman, talks about, um, you know, when, it, when it's a high ball, um, he, he, wants, he wants their thumbs to be touching. And, and when it's a low ball, below the waist, um, he, he expects their pinkies to be touching. So that's something – um, that, that we emphasize with our guys and uh, across, the, across the offensive unit, uh, we, we try to teach and, and get them to understand, um, you know, it's a, it's a simple cue for them um, when, when, when catching the football. And, and we do practice, you know, we will go out pre-practice and uh, I'll throw them low balls, I'll throw them high balls, whether that be head on, whether that be from the side, and, and making sure that, you know, they're, they're using the fundamentals of, of hand placement. Um, and the fifth being like a little love, we talked about ball security, you know, protecting the football, snatching it right to the tuck, um, seeing it into the tuck, uh, and, and we're rolling and we're getting north and south. Um, and, and something also our receiver coach says so, so often is, you know, we catch with our eyes. We catch with our eyes. So um, look that ball all the way in, right into the hands. I tell them to attack the white stripe on the football. 
all right, and look it into the tuck and get and get vertical. So uh, with blocking, you know, um, uh, mainly this 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 applies to us uh, in, in pass pro. Uh, most of the time, you know, we don't we don't do a whole lot of, of two back fullback stuff. You know, unfortunately, uh, as a fullback, but um, you know, the first thing. For, for me in, in uh, when we're blocking is, is your eyes. Where, where are your eyes? You know, a lot of times in pass pro, um, for me, I'm telling them, you know, inside peck, inside peck. We can we can find a lot of cues off their inside peck, you know, off, off the defender's inside peck. So that's, that's where I expect their eyes to be, you know, and I, I expect their leverage to be pad under pad, eyes under chin. Um, obviously, you know, we always want great pad level and body lean, but here uh, we want to be ready, you know, our hips cool, ready to strike, ready to come through the defender. Um, and then third being arms, you know, with, with that strike I talked about, you know, we have to be inside the framework with our hands and elbows. We have to be inside the framework, um, getting, a, getting a great strike with, within their pecs, you know, right around um, the interior shoulder area. Uh, that, that should be the widest we should be. Um, the fourth is feet, all right, um, is our base. We, we want shoulder width apart and balanced. Uh, that's, you know, as simple as we can get. We, we you know, we teach uh, more, more knee bend than waist bend, obviously, um, in, in an athletic position. Uh, the, the fifth you know, I, like I said, I want them to finish in a dominant position with everything they do. You know, here in pass pro, um, you know, a dominant position is is a win. Um, is you finishing, you know, between the defender and the quarterback. That, that's a win. In, in the run blocking game, obviously we want to finish on top on top of our man, um, driving our knees, pounding our feet, and, and playing through the whistle, man. That's, that's a huge, um, you know, re reflection of uh, of the culture you have is, is how, how they play through the whistle and, and you know, how they play. Uh, for for what, whatever it is, four to five seconds um, down to down, snap to snap. Um, we want to make sure they're they're playing all five seconds and making sure they give uh, everything they can, whether it be um, you know running, running with the ball, catching the ball, or blocking for the ball. So this is something that I love right here, man. I'm a huge evaluator. I'm a huge um, proponent of giving feedback on everything. Um, so you see, I already have my my practice one um, grade sheet ready. This is obviously um, a made-up comment here, but the, the way I grade my guys is on two things: is on assignment and technique. So um, for for them, they obviously see see the play call and see see their number to, to you know identify what what play we're running and, and who ran the ball. And next is their assignment. Um, there, there's one or three things I'll give them. I'll either give them a zero for you know that that was good, you did your assignment, um, but but nothing spectacular, you know, nothing um, world beating, and also nothing that's that's detrimental to to our assignment. Um, that can get a plus, which means, you know, above average, you did something really well. Um, and, and, and third, being a minus, you know, you did something below average, you did something that you, did, you didn't complete your assignment. Um, so there's, there's, those are the three things that, that I'll give them feedback wise. Um, they'll also be graded on technique. So same thing, plus zero minus. Um, and, and then lastly, we'll, we'll have a comment, comment section where, um, you know, it, most of the time it's gonna be, it's gonna be more than, you know, great cut. All right, I'm 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 a big feedback giver. Like I said, I want to give them as much as they can. All right, without without clouding their mind, you know, using buzzwords that we use, um, communicating the way I communicate to them in meetings and, and in practice. All right, keeping it keeping it consistent and making sure they're hearing, you know, everything we we've talked about um, through meetings and through practice and, and overemphasizing it right here. Um, and the second column here, you know, I'm telling my guys um, some, something I also like to talk about is, you know, how are we going to expand our room? You know. Where are we going with our room? You know how how are we expanding our role on the team within our room? And then that can that that shows up, you know, probably the most on special teams. Um, you know, I take pride in in having our guys on special teams. When I when I was at Vandy, um, you know, our running back coach was our special teams coordinator. So we had you know our starting running back Ralph Webb, fifth year senior, running down on on kickoff and and making plays. You know, playing playing punt return, playing punt, um, doing everything he needed to do because you know that that was our culture inside of our room. So. This second half of, of the sheet right here has to be earned, guys. We gotta we gotta earn that that side of the sheet. Um, you know, it won't show up until we earn it, until we we find another guy that, that that's on that's on the field and and is and is putting in reps and, and doing a great job. So uh, we gotta earn that second half of the sheet. And um, like I said, I'm I'm big on, on giving them feedback on, on what they put on tape. You know, I tell them your tape's your resume. Uh, that's that's something that that Derek Mason fed into us as um, you know as players at Vanderbilt. Uh -huh understanding that, you know, you put something on tape every day. You know, that, that's, that's the only thing you're getting evaluated on right now. So um, make sure you, you put your best foot forward every time that that, that, that film cuts on and, and you step on that grass. So, um, you know, last thing, last thing right here, and I'll get into some drill work. Um, you know, 
at all costs, I, I tell them this. This is this is the running back law we follow. Um, you know, there, there are six things that, you know, if we can do these things well, we're going to be um, tremendous at running the football. That, that's what I'm telling them. So uh, these are things I'm coaching every day. You know, they're hearing these these buzzwords um, the, every day, you know, 24-7, 365. They're hearing these words. They're understanding um, exactly what it means. Uh, the first being, be in combination with the offensive line, display consistent footwork, trust the quarterback and attack the track, maintain eye discipline, press the line of scrimmage, cut and be decisive. And if we can do those six things, guys, I feel like we have a really good chance, um, you know, at, at our room doing some really special things. And um, something I wanted to hit on here, you know, I'm, I, I'm a huge proponent of footwork, um, footwork out of the backfield, um, you know, the, the detail of it and, you know, the placement that it puts us in. So, you know, I'm telling these guys, do it, having your footwork, you know, displaying your footwork at the beginning of the play is like making your bed in the morning. When you get up in the morning, you know, you make your bed and you set a successful tempo for that day. And it, it applies the same way here um, with every play. You know, every play is a new day. We, we display consistent footwork every, every down, every snap, whatever is required of us. Um, we're doing that perfectly. So we set the tempo of the play to, to where we're successful moving forward. Um, a little bit of drill breakdown. So, um, you know, I, I've kind of categorized my, my way of thinking in, in, in drill work. You know, um, I, I've seen a lot from, from Minnesota's running back coach, Kenny Burns. He does a great job um, with their drill work. And, you know, I, he, he inspired me to kind of categorize all right, my drill work, you know, and, and lay it out on paper uh, and, and really understand uh, and, and, and show and be visible on what we expect, what we're looking for, and, and, and how to do the drill correctly. So, um, you know, these, these are a couple of drills I'll go through, um, you know, and, and define each thing and, and, and give you a couple of coaching points. Um, also provide, you know, a drill for, e for, each, um, for each category for you guys to see and kind of get a feel of, of, of what I'm doing, what I'm teaching, and, and how I'm trying to move forward with, with our guys. So um, the, the, the first is, is a lateral cut drill, you know, in, in other words, as a jump cut, all right? Um, you know, I define that by, by bringing both feet off the ground and moving laterally, all right, with, with our body inside our column. So um, that, that's a special buzzword I use is, is our column. So uh, this past, last season, um, you know, I, I coached our safeties. I, I was brought in at East Central as a safeties coach, um, and I coached our safety. So I'm, I was fairly new to, to DB play, so I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't one of these um, experienced DB guys that, that, that has all the terminology. You know, I'm steady learning, steady growing, and and trying to put my guys in, in a position to be successful. And what, what I found is, you know, a lot of our guys, they, they're really, uh, they like to overstrike, you know, like they like to overreach, especially out of their transitions um, in our backfield. So, you know, one day we get a means and I, I draw, um, you know, a stick figure and a column around it. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get them to understand the biomechanics of, you know, when you step outside of this column, you put yourself in jeopardy. All right? You give yourself less surface area on your foot to work off of. So um, that, that's something I came up with that I felt, it really stick with my guys. Um, it, it really sticks with, with, with the guys and, and how they understand, you know, their, their biomechanics and where, where they need to place their feet and how they, how they work their arm action, all that good stuff. Um, you know, a couple of coaching points within these drills, um, mainly just, just looking at a jump cut. A couple of coaching points is, you know, we always want to keep our shoulders square. All right, so, so we have the potential to, to, to get back vertical now. All right. Um, Slight body lean, you know, I'm, I'm always looking at their body lean. I'm, I'm a huge proponent of pad level and body lean. And, um, you know, there, there's many ways, like, like I said, every, every guy's subjective, all right? Every, body, every guy's body lean is going to look a little bit different, all right? We want to make sure, you know, we put them in a, in a position to where they're comfortable, all right, but, but it looks how we want it. And we, and we have the biomechanics of, you know, um, knee, uh, chest over knees, knees over toes, those, those type of things. And they understand it and they can display it, um, you know, when, when told to. And then the last thing is that we want their weight to control. You know, for first day of camp, I'll, I'll probably set this drill up and I'll tell them now, look, we're going we're gonna to go 50% through this drill and I'll have a guy um, that, that goes and goes through 100%. And, you know, I, I love the effort now. I love the effort, but, you know, let's slow down. Let's control our weight. Let's understand how, how to move efficiently rather than, you know, like, like I said, a bull in a china shop running down the field, um, you know, with no control. Uh, and I, like I said, I – I love uh, what, what, what Coach Kenny Burns does at, at, at Minnesota. Uh, and one thing I heard him say is, you know, the worst thing you can do as a running back with the jump cut is make it with space. So here um, in our L drill, we're, we're emphasizing the jump cut, all right, keeping their shoulders square, pressing the bag, keeping their body lean, all right, and then they're going to accelerate and get back into that vertical seam, guys. I know um, a lot of you probably probably understand that vertical seam uh, and, and how it plays out inside zone. Um, but when we get a lot of backside pursuit, um, 
from that zone. So we want to get back into that vertical seam that's created. We drew that backer up front side, and we want to get back into that seam we created um, by drawing him up and making him commit. And, and lastly, guys, I do want to talk about this is, is the finishes on my drill. You'll see um, Cone B right there. You know, I'm, I'm huge on finishes, whether it be a pop-up, whether it be, you know, me at the end throwing something at them, me giving them a head read. There's so many different things you can do. Um, but the, the biggest thing for me is getting my guys to, to, to react, to, to be natural, to react. And then we can coach up the rest. You know, there will be some days, um, you know, I want to add to their toolbox. I want to continue adding, you know, whether that be uh, – you know, just a, just a stutter step, you know, whether it be a head and shoulder, like we're talking about striping them, um, whether it be a spin move, whatever it is, I want to teach them different finishes. So there'll be some days, you know, I'm, I'm telling them, I want you to make your own move, make sure you press the bag, make sure you're tight off of it in your cuts. All right, but make your own move, be creative, um, work on things you don't feel comfortable working on. Um, and, it, and it really um, helps us develop at the second and third level in, in our drills. Um, and that, that's just the way we emphasize it. Um, you know, you can, you can do many different things. I've seen people throwing tennis balls, at up at the upper body, throwing bags at their at their lower, whether it be a shoot, um, whether it be a cone, just just to make a, a head and shoulder on. You know, I all that stuff I, I love. I, I wanna I wanna mix it up. I wanna keep a variety of finishes so they get comfortable, all right, fit, accelerating and finishing on the second and third level. And this 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 is something, you know, I also use at, at point A is, is their slide drop footwork. That's our inside zone footwork, um, making sure our shoulders are square, making sure we're tight um, inside our column. The next um, is, is our vertical step, yeah, a vertical step. Um, now, so you'll see here, they're just, just starting on the drill now. Um, you know, they're, they're going two and a hole through the back, trying to keep their feet square or trying to keep their shoulders square, trying to keep um, their shoulders and hips square, working through the bag, getting a head read off coach. Um, and when they come off that bag, um, you'll, see, you'll see the numbers one and two. You know, the, the first step is the first, the first foot that's come, gonna come out of that bag. All right, they're still gonna be square. Um, coming through those bags now, the vertical step comes into play on that second step, all right? Um, just, just like if we were running a gap scheme. We're working downhill, all right? The, 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 the windows in gap scheme are a lot tighter, are a lot quicker. They flash a lot faster. So we want to teach these guys, all right, not to overstride, not to cross over, all right? But when they see it, go. Take a vertical step into that gap now. So that, this is what we're teaching, um, you know, with, with vertical steps. You know, like I said, we're, we're starting all different types of ways. We're finishing all different types of ways. Um, there's, there's many ways you can do this, even if it's from uh, you want to take some, some off your guys' legs. You know, it's, it's midseason and, and they're starting to hurt. Um, you know, start, start sedentary. You don't have to start with a head read and, uh, and all that good stuff. Start sedentary, cut the yarders down, um, and make sure they're getting what they need. Um, so, so going back to defining a vertical step, you know, I, I see it as picking one foot off the ground and my second step being vertical against, you know, my bodily momentum. Um, a couple coaching points I, I have inside these drills, and you, you'll see that, you know, the side step is not the only thing we're working on here. We're working on, you know, you know pressing line scrimmage, getting a head read, finishing, all that good stuff. But the, the main point of this drill is, you know, to keep their shoulders square, stay inside their column, and, you know, don't reach over stride or cross over. Those are the three things that, that we're trying to prevent, um, doing these vertical steps, um, you know, making sure they're preventing, preventing them from crossing over. So a couple of vertical cut drills, um, you know, in terms of vertical cut, you know, I see it as when we vertical cut, like, a, like an outside zone cut, I, I want them to take three steps to get their hips squared. Uh, I think, you know, uh, as, a, as a weight room guy, as a strength conditioning guy, this is something I've studied a little bit. You know, I put a lot of time into um, studying these vertical cuts and how, how we can, you know, give them cues to, to be more efficient cutters and, and, and be great out of their breaks and all that good stuff. So, um, you know, after studying here, a couple guys talked about it. I came up with this is, is the three steps is, is your plant foot, um, which is going to stop your momentum, your drive foot, which pushes your momentum to your target, and your third, your lock foot. All right, it locks your hips to your target. Um, your, your hips are now pointed directly at your target, and you've made three steps. All right, you've got your hips turned, and now they're square to your target. So that's, that's what I try to, um, you know, teach and evaluate based off of when we look at uh, our vertical cuts, our outside zone cuts. Um, a, a couple coaching points, like I said, three steps to get our hips square. That's, that's the most it should take. Um, you know, that, that's the fluid way of doing it. That's the way we, we stay inside our collar, right? And we want to maintain our pad level through our cut. You know, so, so many times we see a guy pop up before or after the cut, you know, whether he's, he's going into the cut, he's putting the brakes on and, and popping up, or he, he's coming out of the cut and, and raising up right after that second step, all right? We want to make sure they stay, you know, at the same level. And here you can use a shoot. It's great. You know, use a shoot. For, for their approach or for their finish. Um, 
you, you, you can cut this down. I, I think it's great for, for end season um, because I, I put about three yards in between these cones, and, and that's all we do. Um, three yards, and, and that's, that's enough for them to make sure they're, they're, they're accelerating with great pad level, um, you know, and, and getting around that cone in three steps. Coach, got a question here for you. Go ahead, uh, Coach. It was asked uh, how far or staggered are, are the cones for this drill? Oh, you just, never mind. Three yards, yep. I, I usually do these, um, you know, in an M shape. So, so this one right here will be about five yards from, from the start cone, or your start cone will be about five yards from your second cone in essence. Cool, we're good. Because like I said, um, you know, the, the yardage, especially during season, we want to keep these guys fresh, man. We got, we got ballers and we want to let them ball. So, um, you know, how do we keep them fresh? How do we keep them mentally locked in? And how do we make sure, you know, throughout the season, our outside zone cuts are still efficient and they're, they're increasing in efficiency. Um, and this, this is a great way to do it. You know, I believe in this fully. I've seen it work. Um, you know, I've seen guys come out of, out of one session doing this um, a lot more comfortable in their, in their vertical cuts. The next is body control. All right. Um, you know, I, I'm going to talk about a power position is, is the position I want them in um, when, when we do body control drills. And that power position is knees bent. All right. We don't want them to, to bend over at the waist. We want their knees bent. All right. We want their spine in line, um, a slight body lean and their eyes on their target. So that, that's huge when we talk about um, um, pad level and, and body control. We, we always want our eyes on our target. So um, within this, if, if you want to utilize reads, you know, it, first couple of days, it may be too early to, to, you know, utilize reads, whether it's giving them a number, um, you know, hold something up, having them repeat it, whatever it be, them going through this drill. All right. Um, you know, the first thing I try to do is just make sure we, we have the basics, which is, you know, creating and maintaining a power position to run behind pads through traffic. So, so here, you know, a couple of coaching points, um, you know, like I said, every, every guy's power position looks different. The autonomy of, of, of all your guys, their, their bodies are going to be different. You know, their body mechanics are going to be different. Some legs are going to be longer. You know, some you're going to have your 5'8 backs. Whatever it be, we want to make sure, you know, we find their comfortable power position. You know, we have to be so subjective with each kid and make sure we understand, you know, exactly how they operate. Um, you know, I, I, I'm more of a, of a subjective coach on, you know, I, not every kid is going to be the same. Not every kid is going to respond the same. Not every kid is going to learn the same. So we have to be, you know, efficient coaches and great coaches in terms of, you know, making sure each guy understands what we're trying to tell them. And that may be, you know, saying it a different way, rewording, um, you know, so some of your verbiage. Um, and, and that's what it takes. If, if you want to make sure every guy in your room gets it, every guy is on board with you and every guy's moving forward, you know, as expected. Uh, a couple coaching points within these drills, um, just, just making sure they're, they're under control is, you know, I want to control their body with their chest over knees and their knees over toes, staying right inside that column, um, like I said. You know, I want, to, I want to control their body to create that power position, staying inside their column, just like I said. Um, you know, you're, you're seeing here in this drill, I call this the live feet drill. Um, we want to stay tight to the cone, all right? Keep our feet as tight as we can, moving our feet, keeping them hot, staying right in that power position, all right? And keeping our pad level as we accelerate to the next cone. And we repeat, we repeat. And then we also add a finish. You see, we accelerate, keep our body lean, and finish. All right, whatever that finish be, just like we talked about. Um, you know, whether it be a cone, a pop up. Um, you know, I've I've heard, I've heard uh, uh, somebody pass this on to me. I can't exactly remember who it was, um, but it was two aspects of the finish. You know, you they can have a, a finesse finish or a physical finish. Um, those, those are the two type of finishes I try to classify. Um, you know, our, our our finishes into and 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 make it simple for them. Uh, make them understand, you know, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish with our finish. Next being knee drive. Um, you know, knee drive is huge. It's huge in traffic. Um, it, it's huge in strength conditioning. Uh, across the board, we want to make sure, you know, they're controlling their hips, they're lifting their thighs, all right, and they're increasing their stride frequency. And, and what this does, you know, and telling them to lift through their thighs. A lot of guys, when you talk about knee drive, they want to reach their knee, right? They want to reach, um, you know, they have a terrible shin angle. I want to tell them to lift their thighs, all right? It, it keeps that knee tight to them, all right? And, and when we're in a body lean, that's how we increase stride frequency. So, um, you know, a couple of coaching points here. There's, there's many ways you can teach knee drive, um, you know, but, but I want them to remain in their power position, all right, with slight body lean. I want to see quick turnover in their feet, all right, because we're forcing them to, to, to bring their knees up, to drive through their thighs. Now I want to see them put them back down, put force in the ground, all right, and quick turnover in their feet. And the biggest thing here, guys, is, you know, I – I see, I see a lot is, you know, their eyes come straight down. When you, when you put something um, bigger at their feet, more challenging, right down at their feet, their eyes want to follow. So we, we got to get them in 
in, in a great habit early of, of making sure and, and trusting our feet and having, having confidence in, in what we're doing with our knee drive and, and how we're moving our feet, our turnover, um, and all that good stuff. And, and this drill right here, um, you know, I, I, I took this drill directly from JMU. Uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm thankful for, for technology and the coaches that, that put things out. Um, this, is, this is something I took. You know, I use, I, I love to do it because, you know, one, we're emphasizing our shoulders being square. You've seen just about every drill we, we've tried to teach them, you know, to keep their shoulders square, to keep their shoulders square. Now we're adding, you know, the knee drive into it. All right, we still have the press the bag concept. All right, and they're working through knee driving, through the bag, staying low. Um, you know, the biggest thing I want to see here, like I said, controlling their hips, making sure, you know, their upper body isn't popping up, isn't bending down too much. We want to make sure it's staying right where it is. All right, slight body lean, all right, the whole way through. Being consistent the whole way through and finishing tight off that bag cone, whatever it be. And the last one being pad level drills. Uh, this is the last one I'm going to talk about. You know, in, in terms of pad level, I, I want to see that power position. All right, I want to see their upper body close to parallel with the ground. Now, when when they're running, this this will this will happen. And it will be in effect. You know, as, as speed picks up. And like I said, knee. I want their knees bent more than the waist. This is huge. You know, when you get under a shoot, a lot of guys want to bend down right at the waist. All right, and lift their neck up. Guys, we want. I want their spine in line. I want their spine completely in line. Their head straight forward. All right, and bending at the knees, getting in a great athletic position. All right, ready to bend. Hips coiled up, ready to throw. Um, you know, like like I said, a couple coaching points. Knees bent chest slightly leaning forward and their eyes on target. You know, this is, it's, it's, it's very um, continuous throughout our drills as we're working on different things. We, we keep the same coaching points, all right? We want to see the same things. We want to see our backs um, being super efficient in the way they move and, and ultimately, you know, getting to where we want to be within our pad level. So, so that, that's all I got today, um, guys. You know, I, I appreciate it, um, Coach, Coach Grandinetti, for having me on, man. It's, um, you know, it's a pleasure. It's an honor. Um, I'm excited to share, you know, what, what we do um, and how we do it and, you know, my, just my philosophies, man. It, it's been a great time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always fired up to speak and, and, and share my knowledge. No, awesome. That was awesome, Coach. Really appreciate that. And obviously, if any, if any coaches have any questions, uh, just hit that chat. And, of course, coaches, uh, all of his contact information is there to, to follow up. I know me personally, I, I'd love to see some of those, uh, some of those drills that, that you were talking about before, just like on film. I think it would be kind of cool to see. But. Uh, especially that uh, that three step drill, kind of intrigued by that. Um, I coach receivers myself, so obviously you know we, we handle a lot of footwork things <clears throat> and just different, you know. And I like to break down uh, certain cuts by steps and things like that. So I'd love to see how that works. I mean, it's it's cool how you can kind of you know see how even different position groups do things and, and kind of incorporate it to your own stuff. And that's uh, that's that's always been interesting for me. So I definitely love to check that out. No doubt, man. You know, and it going going back to what you're saying, you know like I talk about in the strength conditioning world, you know, applying um, what, what we're doing and, you know, we're, we're teaching base within, within our squats and our, and our hand cleans and our power cleans. And um, the base we teach, you know, it directly applies to the way we're bending and the way we're moving yep. um, the posture we carry. It, it all directly applies. And I think it's, um, it, it's cool to see, man. I think it's, it's an art. Um, it's, it's special to see. And I'm, you know, I'm a fanatic about it. You know, I'm, I'm obsessed with, you know, um, strength conditioning and, and run game and all that good stuff. Yeah, Coach, we might have to get you back on to do a little uh, SNC talk, man. Man, no doubt. No doubt. I'd, I'd love to. I'd yeah, we'll love do to. That. No, that. Yeah, we'll do that for like next week or something. Okay, let's do it. That, that's part of part of me that I kind of neglect. You know, I, I think I love X's and O's just a little bit more, um, you know, but I, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of strength conditioning world. You know, obviously, no as, a, as a fullback, man, um, you know, it's in my blood. It's my DNA. Oh, yeah. No, we'll, we'll definitely set that up. Uh, question was here, Coach, if you're willing to share – the presentation and any film on those drills? I'd love to. I'd love to. Um, I'll share this presentation. If you'll just reach out to me through email, I will, I'll, I'll just reply with, with that, um, with the presentation. And, um, you know, a way of getting video on it, I think I, think I do have a PowerPoint with video on it. You know, I've, I've struggled to, to keep it from crashing with so much video on it. But I will, um, whether that just be one clip, you know, I'll, I'll try to get that to you guys, whoever – you know, reaches out and, and, and ask, I'll get you something, you know, to have a visual. Awesome. Yeah, I'm about to email you myself, Coach. I'll, I'll send you our prospect list as well. Uh, Good deal. And all you guys, please do that. You know, like I said, we're, <laughs> we're looking to evaluate talent. Um, you know, it's hard to get out-of-state talent here. Um, like I said, we get 10 guys, but, um, you know, everybody knows they, they have good players and, and we're looking for good players. So, um, you 100%. know, whether it's a fit or not, it, it doesn't always work. But, 
um, you know, I'm, I'm willing to evaluate and make sure that, that that's the answer first. No, 100%. Coach, I really appreciate it. Um, like I said, I, you know, we'll, uh, we'll talk after this and we'll, uh, we'll set something up. And, but, you know, once again, to all the coaches who, who took the time out to jump in here, man, thank you guys. And then, of course, uh, Coach McElwain for taking the time out to put the presentation together and, uh, you know, help us get better. It was really good. Like I said, I, you know, I'm, I'm about to email you now because I would like to see those drills, man. That's, that's good stuff. Really okay. good stuff. Yeah. We do. I'd, lo I'd love to share with anybody if, you know, if anybody has any questions or uh, concerns, whatever it be, just want to chop it up, man. I'm always open. My, my phone lines, you know, it's always open. And I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm always open. I love to make new connections, um, you know, make, make new coaching friends and, and increase, increase, you know, the, the value of this community, of the coaching community. Preach, man. Amen.